In India, we were most, Graham and I were mostly involved in leprosy work. Um, that means caring for persons affected by leprosy, giving them treatment, and um, trying to keep them occupied with occupational therapy. We had three children, and I was mostly caring for them and homeschooling them, housewife, mother, and also we had a number of people come in from the villages who would attend to the local doctor, and often they would come to our house and stay for three or four days because it was too far for them to go back to their own village. Um, we used to also go out and visit the churches as we had time, but majority of the time, in the, in the 20 years I was there, majority of the time was taken up um, in the caring for those persons affected by leprosy. We also had a rehabilitation farm um, with about 30 residents, so by the, you know, totally we had about 100 or more people under our care. On the 23rd of January 1999, my husband and sons had actually um, gone out to a jungle camp. Now, a jungle camp is actually a, like a Christian convention of four days of meetings for the Christians particularly. Um, just a chance for them to have some Bible study, some fellowship and, you know, get together, a bit of fun together also. We all like to do those things. Um, they, this camp was held every year and was one of a series of six camps that were held in different places throughout the um, two months of the dry season when the rice harvest was finished, when you know people had a bit of time. And so they were out at this camp, which was 160 kilometres from where we were living in Berry Porter. And they, during the night, some people decided that they didn't like what the Christians were doing and I guess they targeted um, the family, thinking that you know we were probably the result, we were probably the cause of everyone becoming Christian, but of course God is the one who um, brings people to himself. We can't forcibly convert anybody. So that's, so that's what they were doing at the camp and um, they normally slept in the vehicle, uh, like a jeep, a long jeep, and they loved it. And being father and son, I mean, they, the boys just loved being with their father and they'd been up for a walk and collected rocks and all sorts of things and were just really enjoying themselves. So on that night of the 23rd of January, which was halfway through the camp, a mob of people came in about just after 12 with torches and, and sticks and beat the vehicle and then set the vehicles on fire. Um, I believe they had actually tried to escape, but it was not possible. The, the, the rest of the campers were really afraid, as you can imagine in the, um, there's no electricity, it was new moon so you know the dead of night dark as anything a mob of people um, you know I think most people would be frightened and so they they ran away those who did want to come out and out of their houses and to help they found their houses that had been bolted from the outside I heard noises when I got up I heard the screams of a child I tried to come out of the house myself but three people at my door said they would kill me if I did. Um, so that apparently they couldn't escape, so they, well, they died. It appears that it was a planned um, attack. They planned to go and disturb the Christians is what we heard. There has been one person that's been called the main accused and initially he was given the um, death sentence which was commuted to, the lo to life imprisonment. When I think back on it, I said to, I said to Esther actually it was only within a few hours of them actually being killed that, that day and it was probably a few a couple of hours after I first about four hours after I'd heard the initial news that the jeeps had been burnt though I didn't know what hap had happened to the family. Esther said to me mummy what is the news and she was 13 at the time and I said it seems like we've been left alone. And that was sort of how I broke the news to her and but we will forgive. I think I said won't we and she said yes mummy we will. And so again, those, those words at that time, I will forgive, I think started a healing process in my own life because if we forgive, 
we, we can't allow bitterness to come in. I survived the pain that followed the deaths of my three family members, only by God's grace, I say. After, initially I probably, like, you know, you go into shock, you go into disbelief, um, but God really enabled me to, that didn't happen to start with, in a sense, it did, but it didn't. It, and. I, but I do remember some time later when all the crowds had died down and there weren't so many people around, I remember just absolutely weeping to the very depths of my heart where, you know, it was like my whole being was coming out. I think the journey of forgiveness is an ongoing journey in a sense. It's certainly the, when I when I forgave the very first, um, in the very first instance, I guess you could say, um, I believe that set me on a on a longer journey. Um, the words I f the words I forgive uh, were like starting a healing process. And ever since that time, I've had a picture in my mind of like two pictures really, but a picture you know when it's dry and barren and a drought, you have dry parched cracked land, which we have many few places in Australia at the moment. Um, and then when it rains, the, that's like the land receives healing and it, all the cracks heal up and it bursts into, you know, freshness and flowers and grass. So what is it? This is Graham here and Timothy. So even though Exodus says, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, Jesus said in his teaching, he said, though it is written, which means it's referring back to the Old Testament, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Um, I say, I say, but love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who persecute you. And this, and you know, in Romans it says, um, Romans chapter 12, it says, bless those who persecute you, and seek to live in harmony with one another. By forgiving the killers, I've been able to. It's, it's been a release to me in, in a healthy experience in the sense that I'm not harbouring bitterness and I'm able to move on in life in a sense, um, but I, I'm not having to constantly think about those people who killed my husband and what's happening to them and are they being, you know, given justice because, again, because I know that God has his ways and deal, will deal with them, but I, but I also pray that they will know God's forgiveness in their own lives. So in that way, it's been a release to me to be able to forgive.